What's up, math scholars? It's Halloween! Yeah! So the Great Pumpkin will probably be coming tonight if you'd like to wait, wait up in your backyard. Be on the lookout for it. Where's your notebooks? We're about to do some notes, scholars. Everybody get your notebook out. Or some piece, a piece of paper. Hey, so this is the last section in Chapter 2. That means tomorrow starts our review, and then early next week is our test. Um, so who's excited to finish Chapter 2 today? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It's mostly in the graphing calculator, so if you're at home watching this video, click pause, get that calculator dug out of your book bags, okay? Get ready. All right, we're going to start with talking about what turning points are. As far as what you should write down off this slide, I would probably just draw a picture of the statue. I would label this as a local maximum, and I would label this as a local minimum. And I would also maybe just jot down that local maximums and local minimums can also be referred to as turning points because it's where the graph makes a turn and heads the other direction. Okay. All right. Hello, people in the video. We are real quick going to just state the maximum number of turning points in the graph. And I can't remember if I cut the video off and showed you this rule. So I'll show you this rule real quick. The graph of every polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus 1 turning points. We're going to put that idea into play. This first one has degree 7, so it has at most 6 turning points. This graph has degree 9, so it has at most 8 turning points. You just subtract 1 from the degree. This graph has degree 2, so it has at most 1 turning point. Okay. All right, we're now going to head to our graphing calculators and stick this equation in. Um, this equation is a little bit different because it's not in standard form, but that's okay. I kind of sometimes look at this and think to myself, if I would FOIL this all the way out, what would be the degree? Does anybody know? If I made you guys FOIL this all the way out, you know what the degree would be? Degree 3. Yeah, because there'd be three binomials, x plus 3, x minus 2, and another x minus 2. All right, I want to show you where the fraction button is, because the pre-calc teachers say it's super important to know where it is before you guys get there. You want to hit alpha, and then you want to hit y equals, which is basically alpha f1, and then you want to hit number 1, and it's called the n divided by d button, but it basically allows you to input a 1 sixth in the mid -meter. Now, if you have a ti83, it won't have that button. No big deal. You can just type 1 divided by 6, and that's the same thing. But uh, yeah, that using that fraction button becomes key more next year when you're graphing big, huge fractional equations. All right, at this point, I have to put in my x plus 3 and then my x minus 2 squared. So honestly, before I even hit graph, you should have an idea where the solutions are, right? What's the solution to this binomial? Negative 3. What's the solution to this binomial? Positive 2. And isn't there one more x minus 2 because of what's where? So that x equals 2 is a double solution. So it's going to be x equals negative 3, x equals 2, and x equals 2. Let's grab it. Let's see if that's where those x intercepts look like where they're at. So it's crossing through at negative 3. That's a single solution. And it has a turning point at 2, so that's a double solution. We talked about double solutions a few days ago. Maybe last Friday, but it wasn't the exact day. Okay. Hello. Can you how to do fractions? Yeah. Yes. I'll tell people in the video, too. All right. Hello, people in the video. If you forgot or you couldn't figure out where the fraction button is, you have to have a TI-84 to have this button. The 83s won't have it. It's alpha. It's not going to let me hit alpha because I'm not in this place where I can do actually do fractions. So let's pretend I'm in the home screen or in the graphic screen. It's alpha f1, so alpha y equals, and then number one. And it pulls up two empty boxes where you can put the fractions in. Yep. All right, we're back. We are now discussing where our minimum, our local minimum lives. Everybody point to where they think the local minimum lives. Are you pointing right here? Okay, that's him. We are going to use the calculate menu to find this local minimum that I'm pointing to. So it's second traits to get yourself to the 
calculate menu. What choice do you think we should use if we're trying to find a local minimum? Choice three. Yep, and you can hit button three, minimum. And the same thing happens as yesterday. Now, you can either type in a number to the left of that minimum, or if you notice your cursor is to the left, which mine is, you can just click enter. So a good left bound would be zero, which is where my cursor is, so I'll hit enter. And then you can type in a number to the right, or you can move your cursor to the right. It really doesn't matter. I'll just move my cursor to the right, since my cursor is just right there. You could just type in two enter, doesn't matter. Or no, I would do three. Three or four is what I would probably do. Enter. And then for guess, you just enter right on by that guess. And you have it. Now, sometimes these answers are real weird and they need rounded it and interpreted a little bit. Like 1.99999. I'd probably just been right down to two, right? And then this number is 3.23 times 10 to the negative 12. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny number. So it's basically the number zero. So I'm just going to write down 2 comma 0 for my local minimum. 2 comma 0 on my graphic. Heck, I'll just graph it right now. So it's negative 3. So it crosses through negative 3, and then it has a turning point at 2. That's what the graph looks like. And that's where the local minimum is. Let's go ahead and find that local maximum. So back to the calculator. We're going to go back into the calculate menu, second trace. What selection should we do this time, do you think, for local maximum? Number four. Number four, maximum. All right, so I need a number to the left of this local maximum. Can you guys think of one? Negative five works for me. So type in negative five, click enter. Or you can move your cursor over there, it doesn't matter. And then I need a number to the right of where I point to right here. That's mm -hmm. the Zero works for me. Enter. And then for guess, you just hit enter one last time. And it's negative 1.3 comma. Is that a, what is that number? It's hard. It's so blurry. I'm like 3.08. 3.08. 3. 3. So 3.1. Negative 1.3 comma 3.1. You can just round these weird decimals. So, um, all right, we're back. Let's complete the end of behavior for this graph. This, it's been a while since we've seen questions like this. As x approaches infinity, how do the y values behave? They go up. So that means as you go to the right, What's the y value going up? As x approaches negative infinity, or as we go to the left, what are the y values doing? Going down. Right, so I think we, we did that a few weeks ago, but it's been, it's been a while. All right, you want to try one more? We have time for probably one more. <coughs> one more graph. All right, I've got a graph. We're going to identify the x-intercepts and the points of minimums and maximums. Get our equation put in. Take our old one out. So x to the third minus 3x squared plus 6. Three classes again. I can't see that. Let's get all the light. It is small. I've tried making the calculator screen bigger, and it, like, it won't get bigger. Okay, so I'm seeing two turning points. That makes sense because the degree is three. How many solutions are you seeing? Only one right there. Um, it looks to me like it's a, like maybe negative 1.1 or something, you could search the table. I'm not going to even bother searching the table because I know in my calculate menu, I can just calculate out that zero real quick. So I go second, trace, number two. That'll help me get the solution rather quickly. A good left bound for here would be, what do you guys think, negative two? What would be a good right bound for this guy? Zero, okay. And then enter one last time, so that'll be my x-intercept, my solution. 
there we go, negative 1.195. So let's go negative 1.2. Negative one point yeah, negative one point two. Alrighty, let's find our local minimum next. That's located right here where my marker's pointing. So second trace choice three. Now a good left bound for my local minimum would be I don't know zero. You want to do zero for a left bound? How about we do five for our right bound? So the whole point of the bounds, if you still haven't caught on, is to find two, have two arrows pointing in, telling the calculator, search in here for that local minimum. Right, so where I have my arrows is great. Enter one last time for you. Two comma two. Local minimum, two comma two. And last, local maximum. Second, calc, maximum. We're finding this guy, the one right here I'm pointing to. It almost looks like the y-intercept. What would be a good left bound? Anything negative. Negative 2 sound okay? Right bound, maybe 2. You can see my arrows are pointing in. I think I have my bounds. Good. And then gets. Ooh, okay, so this is weird. It's 1.07 times 10 to the negative 6. That's just a really small number. It's basically the same thing as 0. So we're going to write down 0, comma 6. Okay, and I guess I'll sketch it since I'll save these notes. So my sketch, and it comes through at negative 1.2, has a turning point up there at 6. Look at it one last time. And then that local minimum at 2, 2. These points does kind of help you if you're making your sketch. My sketch is never perfect, but good enough. Okay. So, any um, fatal. All right. Well, thanks for watching the video. We got it done in 12 minutes. Your homework is 2 8, which is on the back of 2 7 day 2. Now, if you are at home and you lost the paper, you can't find it anywhere, I have a folder in Polaris in the Chapter 2 folder called Worksheets. And those all the worksheets are going to be in there from here on out. Put those in there for you. Okay. Thanks. Have a happy Halloween.